All right, for the sake of the recording, I'll start over. Hello, it's great to see everybody. Hope your uh, summer's going well here on day two of No Kids. Um, welcome to the uh, ESSER 3 advisory planning team meeting. Um, it's a time for you to become even more uh, experts on ESSER and get your questions answered. Uh, time to do a little bit of budget work on a draft document I'm gonna share. Uh, and a time to really have a conversation through the chat feature or getting off your, your mute um, to look at how we can narrow the usage requests that we received from the staff uh, to date. And also a time uh, for feedback. Um, earlier, I sent out the online survey uh, link that was on the website uh, to all of our staff and it's gonna go out in a school messenger here shortly. Students had already received it before school ended, and I was really proud of the kids. We already have 51 responses uh, from our students, which may be an all-time high for getting feedback from the kids. So we're really excited to see that. Um, <clears throat> the key to that, of course, is feedback as well. And through an email I received from a teacher just about an hour ago, I realized we really needed a text box or, or a chat box um, on the uh, survey, so went back and added that. So if you had any other further comment uh, or ideas, uh, questions, um, you could put it in there and we could see it. Um, so we can keep our FAQ going on, on the website that I'm gonna add. Um, again, it's great to see all of you. I wanted to start with where we are since our last Zoom. Um, it would have been the Thursday before school ended on the 27th, so just a week ago. Um, but we learned a lot in that week, especially as we've delved in some webinars, uh, looked at what other schools are posting and submitting and getting questions answered uh, from really TASBO and some other areas that Joanna works with. So I have a hodgepodge list here that are in no particular order that I wanted to make sure you knew wh where we are. First thing is this posting on our website. Uh, I'm going to go to a shared uh, screen here so you can see um, where um, our information is. Um, it doesn't say it yet, but it, this COVID box is going to go away. <laughs> I know you're all thrilled about that. Um, it's going to move to my Shack page until school starts as we await the final TEA guidelines for next August. I, I know Abbott said what he said about June 4th and all that but I know we'll get additional guidance uh, about where we're heading on that. And so we'll put this box back when the time comes. Um, but right now um, that box will become an ESSER um, site, which I have right now here under our strategic planning. And we have some requirements for posting that I've added to this site. And I'm gonna use a lot of documents from this page. First, we have to list our meeting times and dates. Uh, I've gotta have the online feedback survey linked. And you can see that here in the middle of the page. And then everything we're presenting or using from TEA, TASB, TASA, I've linked down here, including the video from our last meeting that I sent to the West ISD YouTube channel. And here at the bottom are really the important documents of where we are. Um, our presentation from the 20th that we've been using uh, is here. And then today's document that we're gonna go over is listed here on, as the June 2nd uh, draft budget plan. So I just wanted you to see this, and again, it'll be linked to the front page, that black box will say ESSER planning, so everybody can see it and, uh, and click on it. Um, so they'll know what we're sharing and, and what we're debating as we move forward to the board meeting and then the submission of our, our grant application. So I wanted you to see this first. Um, the uh, website is, is key um, for uh, publicity. Um, it's one-stop shopping. And so I'm just going to use this page to dump everything on and through social media and school messenger, I'll make sure our families and, and staff and students all know where to find it. Uh, on the new learning, um, my theme is let's roll um, because I'm already seeing other districts are posting their ESSER positions, uh, already have posted their plans for public comment and uh, are already doing special call meetings or have meetings earlier than we do than the second Wednesday in a month. And so they're, they're already getting their information out there. That helps us to see what they're doing. So I appreciate uh, the, the information that we've been able to, to review. Again, our board meeting is next Wednesday the 9th at 6.30. We're back to in person. And our goal for that meeting after these next two Zooms is to present the plan, have the public hearing, approval for the board to move forward. 
some of the new learning is the plan doesn't have to be very specific for that board meeting approval. Um, most are just listing a header topic that might just say like professional development and then a dollar amount. They're not listing what the trainings are, what the professional development is, or not even breaking it down as a dollar amount. We actually have more in our plan to share today than we've seen on at least a dozen other sites here in the last 48 hours. We actually have specifics from things that you guys have shared with us. We've also learned that the leftover, was that somebody asking a question? I'm sorry. Yeah, this is Lee. Um, oh, yes. Don't we have to, doesn't this have to be approved? I mean, we can present what our plan is, but it still has to be approved, right? Yes, that's what I mean. You guys, two things for the ninth, you guys would hear the presentation and approve and we'd hold the public hearing. Right. Okay. I, for some reason, I was thinking agency-wise, um, it had to be some outsource had to approve it, not just us. Okay. No, we, you know, we post all these things and it, it goes through the grant process. I think what you're thinking of is maybe that TEA is asking for feedback for their funding amount that they have helped and that that has to be approved. Is that maybe what you're thinking? That's probably it. Okay. I was just... You know, we've seen a lot on that one for the TEA amount that they've held back. Um, and they're asking right now for feedback for approval for how they'll roll that out. Okay. Uh, but yes. Um, the next new learning piece, this is a biggie. Um, and it's part of our presentation today that we learned any leftover ESSER 2 money can be used with ESSER 3. And it gave us the ability to use a greater amount over these uh, next uh, three-year budget pieces that we're going to talk about here in a moment. And last Thursday, we were telling you that the state was talking about how we had to save 40% for year three, but I wanted to make sure all of you knew that uh, that actually didn't make it through the legislature, and so we don't have to do that now. I did want to mention the three years because last Thursday, we were only planning a two-year plan, and now we've learned that we can do a carryover for year three. And so when I say year three, of course, I'm talking about 23-24. So 21, 22, 22, 23, 23, 24 school years. So the next three years um, we can use this money for. And so when I receive questions about how are we going to continue this and will it go away in two years, um, continuity, longevity, um, if it's something that's working, um, this is good news for us because it buys us another year that we can stretch it for all the way through the end of the 23, 24 school year and then have it in place uh, for further years if it's something that, that's, that's worked for us and that we wanna continue doing. And that gives me, uh, Joanna and others, the board more time to figure that out. Um, <clears throat> the next thing on here is the lists that we received from you guys. Um, I expect not to be surprised maybe by, by the survey, especially from our staff. Uh, I think we've, we've heard just about every idea out there I heard some good ones in an email a little while ago, but even things we can do through local funding. But with the 15 headers associated with the ESSER grant, the ideas that are going under each of those headers are pretty much the same. You might have a staff request or a training request or a resource request, but since we're approving dollar amounts, if you know through our looking at the ESF and, and district improvement plan and campus improvement plans, if it fits, you know, we can slide it in there. And so we can still take those requests, but it appears the overall general requests are still coming back here over the last few weeks to be the same things. Um, all right, uh, budget goals. Um, again, the survey data, the feedback from you guys, the tying in dollar amounts we've been working on, and then, of course, the tie-ins to the ESF and the different plans I just mentioned. Uh, feasibility has also come up a lot as far as rollouts and uh, how that will look in the campus frameworks. And I, I keep saying this one over and over again. I put beyond 2024 with a question mark on my, my tablet here because I know you guys, especially if it's a position or a program or something that you want to see uh, long-term in West ISD, even though it's three years away, how can we sustain it and maintain it past that 2024? So that will come up uh, quite often. And so I think to best use our time, um, I'm going to uh, pull up this June 2nd document that I'm gonna use as our guide today. Um, and let me increase the size here so you can see a little better. 
Um, just a document we've been sharing in Google to uh, get some things on paper um, that we'll use for the board meeting and the public hearing. This is posted on the website. But I feel like the best way to go through this uh, right underneath the blurb that I typed there just reminds you of the purposes of money. And as a reminder, we have three um, emphasis uh, that we're trying to emphasize there. Of course, the requirement of the grant is very simple uh, as far as uh, understanding the, the premise behind the money and that's learning loss or gaps related to COVID-19. So about the kids and what can we do um, to bridge those gaps. And number two, because they asked for a planning document and we were grateful we already had the ESF race to an A plan in place that we didn't have to go reinvent the wheel. So that's our number two. And then I added number three, just so we could think about again, past 2024 and how we can best impact struggling learning loss uh, learners um, in West ISD at all of our schools uh, over the next three years, which is the grant funding period. As a reminder, um, you've heard Joanna talk about the different ESSERs. She always does a marvelous job of going through the three different funding sources. Uh, of course, we received ESSER 1 first, and that's gone, as you can see here, I put it in parentheses so you know it's already uh, used. ESSER 1 money is, is done. Uh, we used it for our COVID-19 risk mitigation plan and supplies. Um, we actually had more than 171,470, and you'll see that here in a minute when I scroll to the ESSER 2 funding because we're having to use some of the ESSER 2 to cover the other expenses for the risk mitigation plan from this year. So think about that in terms of sanitation and the devices for health screening and temperature checks we've been using, um, the extra mask and cleaning supplies, um, some things we've done with the buildings, um, the, um, the long-term sub plan, um, Am I forgetting anything, Amanda or Joanna? Those are the biggies. My list is complete in my head. I'm seeing some nodding. So that covered the 171, 470. And so ESSER 1 is spent and uh, we're, we're done with that funding source. On ESSER 2, and sorry that it's split between the two pages, I'll fix that. You can see that this is a two-year grant. That's how Joanne has presented it. You can see it's for a pretty good size amount, 737,321. And you can see of that, we have 546, 779, 18 remaining because we've spent an additional 190 on the risk mitigation plan in addition to the 171. And so we're already going into the ESSER 3 three-year plan with that extra almost 550,000 that we can add to the ESSER 3 money. What we've been talking about as a district, and let's start here with feedback, is we really want to focus on that dollar amount um, for the technology piece that has come back uh, really quite a bit, especially with the kids surveys, but also the staff on how we can uh, keep the Chromebook piece going, especially at grade three and, and the portable devices that we've talked about for our staff to take home and and between uh, work and, and work and home. And so I thought I'd start there. And so I'm gonna ask Amanda to kind of share the vision uh, about these two bullet points. And you can see the difference after we uh, utilize the funds that you can see here on these bullet points. So start with this, Amanda, tell us about the elementary plan um, and then the staff plan. Sure, absolutely. So for the, the you see student Chromebooks for West Elementary School, and what that means is we want to go one to one. It's a modified one to one, grades three through five, and at secondary, all that means is that they don't get to take it home, but they do have access one to one to a computer Chromebook at school. What this money you see here, the twenty eight thousand seven hundred thirty dollars is to make sure that fourth and fifth grade have access to 22 computers each teacher and that third grade is added into that. Um, so it's to bump up the fourth and fifth grade number and add the third grade. So what you would see is um, K through two would remain with their current touchscreen 10 per classroom. Grade three as a transition year would be one to one with the touchscreen. Grade four and five would have the same Chromebook that is not touchscreen as transition years into middle school, what they would have. And so that 28,000 number would get us there. Um, 
really thought it would be a lot more than that, but um, Chromebooks are pretty affordable. And so that would get us one-to-one -one, and Leanna's dancing in her little <laughs> square eyes here, um, at third through fifth. So that is the goal. And just so everybody knows, the reason third grade really needs to start having access on a regular basis one-to-one -one, is because we do our testing online uh, for all basically benchmarked units star. And so we need to get them more used to that. And then you see staff Chromebooks. So for us, it's important that our teachers are able to have in their hands the technology that the kids are using. And that gives you the ability as teachers to be familiar and be able to teach things that the kids can do neat tips and tricks with your Chromebook. And so we want to move to a model where each teacher has a Chromebook, which would get rid of the iPads and all that good stuff would go away. And you would have a Chromebook, you would have a monitor docking station so your Chromebook could go with you, whichever room you may end up if you have more than one classroom you work in. Um, and so that number, um, we would also, but by the way, we think it's important that we have those for our instructional aides and other people who um, provide instruction to students. Um, and so that number there is 73,000 to get Chromebooks for each instructional employee in the district, a docking system for each room so that the rooms, even if they're a closed down room and you use it once a month, you can walk in there with your Chromebook and have a docking station. And then a Chromecast, which is Google's version of Apple TV so that you can mirror your Chromebook to your projector. And so all of that can be um, could, could go into the ESSER II fund and leave the difference, which I'll let Mr. Truett talk about. Can I ask a question first? So um, some of our special ed kids may need touch screen as opposed, you know, even when they're getting older. So we need to make sure we have some of those extras for those kids. And when we're saying one-to-one, -one, we are saying one-to-one -one across the board, right? Yes. If you are at secondary, we're currently one-to-one. -one, we do have um, those in our, um, for our, all students, no matter what their uh, situation may be. And we have been doing some special cases as well. But yes, that's a great point, uh, Ms. Crawshaw. We have talked recently about um, with talk, Mrs. Posda, her team, and Cassie about the need to have some available even in the special education room um, that may be specialized for the things she needs. So even for the younger kids um, earlier than third grade. So yeah, that's a great point. Okay. Okay, folks on the Zoom today, I'm gonna to stop right here a moment since technology came back a lot in the survey and feedback and emails in the previous meeting. Okay, she was deaf. Let's, let's hear right now thoughts if you wanna get off your mute or, or chat and tell us if you're missing something on this. Um, again, three through 12, one-to-one, -one, teach kids the Chromebook as well or all staff, I, no, no, sorry, I shouldn't just say teachers there, with the docking and Chromecast. Okay, it's true, one of the things I know we've had a lot of teachers on the 6th through 12th campus have nice. talked to us about is the uh, projectors, you know, the, they have a, a limited amount of lifespan. As the bulbs burn out, those, those projectors are probably more expensive uh, to continue to replace. Uh, so we've had a number of the teachers asking about the small portable uh, projectors that they could use. Would, ever, would that ever be something we would consider instead of the ceiling mounted projectors? The issue with that, Chuck, is the wiring mm -hmm. and the extension cords. But if that's something we need to look at, we've, we've you know, we've done a few of those when we mm -hmm. have. And uh, come in. Come in. We can definitely look into that. Yes. We were in that Zoom meeting on our district and every district received $1.6 million in COVID relief funds. You know, and I told you, remember Donna Burrow got it. Well, let me see here. What would have happened? Put a few here on. Uh... It, it just so that comment I heard, not everybody got 1.6, just so our presentation knows. Some 
like Conley got almost 7 million. So it, it's based on free and reduced lunch applications. So just, just so we know, you know, as we become experts on ESSER about how the funding works. So every district amounts different across the state. Um, Chuck, I need to hear more about that. Uh, video projectors and, and ceilings and going portable and things is, is a next step um, technology framework piece for, for the campuses because what you may not even know since I have some secondary teachers on here that the touch screens that Mrs. Kozda and her staff have requested for the middle school, high school uh, the discussion has been also about you guys in those units, and, and we'd love to come share that vision with you guys of what they're, they're seeking, is they're not going to do the projectors in the ceilings. And so um, you may want to see that technology piece to see what it is that, that they're going with, and so we can have a discussion about what's next for middle school, high school, because you're right, the life of those projectors are coming up soon. I believe it's seven years, and we're at year six, and so... We're, we're in the planning stages for that, and we need to get serious about a, a decision on that. Not a decision, though, uh, in, in my mind, for the things we're looking at, it, it's something the district needs to be responsible for with uh, different funding sources that Joanne and I have been working, working through. And if we think innovatively in terms of projecting, if we're like what you guys are doing here, projecting something to us on our computer screens, you know, there's technology now that is as big as my clip here that fits over my screen like that, that I can show what I have on my, um, a piece of paper lying on top of my keypad. And keypad. Um, just because I've done so much homeschooling kind of stuff, there's this kind of deal that does that kind of stuff. And so we, we need to look at how we can, that doesn't cost much, you know, innovatively, do that even though you're talking about some of our other funding sources but still and also chuck i had one of your teachers ask me today about um, just the need for uh, traditional flat screens on carts for use and and we have eight for that that we've discussed and so there's some things we need to come see you about here early in the summer that as we work through this esther thing that uh, i know we can do not even with ESSER funds, we had other ways or, or have it already that we can do to help you and in your requests. And that's actually a theme for everybody on the Zoom today is, I've loved this exercise because it's made us realize about ways we could spend our title money differently, our other grant monies differently, things we already had in the district that haven't been communicated clearly by us to let the teachers know, well, we actually have that and you're asking for it. So like, yikes, how did, how did we not get that to you? And so it's it's been a uh, great conversations uh, over the last few weeks. Um, so, I mean, just with Chuck's question, you can see we've already got some ideas and elementary's already done some legwork and we've got the TVs that, that we're asking about. And so good good discussions, guys. All right, back to the shared screen here. So anybody have questions about the elementary Chromebooks? Maybe needs for additional Chromebooks, staff Chromebooks, anything there? I don't want to get off this topic because it's a big one on our feedback sheet. I'm so excited if you haven't noticed. I'm so excited. Yeah, you're kind of scaring me. So this is, this is good. I'm happy for you. Mr. Truth, this is Kim. I have a question. That's yes, away. So... Um, on the teacher side, Chromebooks, y'all aren't going to forget that some of us can't use Chromebooks with our software. Are we going to be able to keep desktops because the Adobe and those kind of things, we can't do those on the Chromebooks? That's a great question. And yes, uh, the tech team and I have already been talking about there are several classes that will need kind of a dual technology plan just because of what you teach. So yeah, for sure. Yes, we actually remembered that second miler. We've got this. Um, yes, that did come up. I was in a meeting when I reminded of that, your room and, and Tanya's room. Um, there are actually four rooms. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what the four were now, but I know it came up. So yes, Kim, we will help however we, we can, what you need there. Good point. Anything else on the technology? 
All right, so on that part, 419,520 and, and that 23 cents uh, rolling from ESSER 2 in the ESSER 3. And so I wanna go to this uh, set of bullet points now with the 1.666 Mark of the Beast, 510,000. Um, but we're gonna roll the five, the, or excuse me, the 419,520 in with it. And so if you take those two amounts together, um, it jumped our amount um, all the way to 695, 343, 41 per year. And if we use the carryover guideline to get it to the 23, 24 school year, you can see we almost have 700,000 uh, in new monies to uh, utilize over those three years. And so what we tried to do there is uh, from here on out, when you see things in budget amounts and requests, the goal was to ensure everything else then fit in this $700,000 amount frame so that we could have the ability to have it all three years. And then of course, uh, have it ready for 24, 25, if, if uh, the district and, and the campuses say, yes, let's keep doing this. Um, and so that was key for us is not to have a robust 21, 22 plan where we spend it all and then there's nothing for 22, 23 or 23, 24. We wanted it evenly distributed for sustainability carryover. And so it starts a lot with staffing. As you know, most of our budget each year uh, in West ISD is based on salaries and stipends and in positions, because um, that's really uh, where the money is uh, that we see from the state to put it back onto the campuses with the kids. And so a lot of feedback has come along with the technology uh, was this one and what we can do to really help with intervention. If I had to give it a theme, again, it's about learning loss um, and a lot of mental health things came through. And so you'll see a theme to this um, about crisis social worker type thing. And then a lot of coordinators and interventionists and teachers, specialist aides and, and things focused on intervention and, and meeting the needs of struggling learners. And then some instructional technology teacher leads uh, stipends as well. But to tell the whole story, if you look at that bottom part there that I have on the screen, there were some things we had already planned before we even knew we were getting the ESSER 3 money. And I wanted to make sure you saw how all this fit together. And so you can see what we had already put in place and we're hiring for and looking at moving people around um, and making sure that we had ready um, before we even knew we had this other piece. And so when you see some of this information, you can see how it fits um, in the list that's up above that's uh, ESSA requests. So if you look at our feedback, um, overwhelmingly, the mental health crisis counselor piece has come back over and over and over again. The need for a fourth counselor uh, in West ISD that services our, our most at risk kids. Um, this has never been more prevalent here, even in the last few weeks of school um, with the death of a student. And we had the unfortunate situation with another student whose father uh, committed a murder suicide that you guys read about probably in the news and all the kids that are impacted by these type things. And, and Sharon and Claudia and Christy always remind me that when these type of situations happen and you have a full schedule or you're doing, um, you know, uh, uh, different things, whether it's required trainings or meeting with kids about course schedules or, or getting GPAs and class rank ready, you have to drop what you're doing is we have a kid in need and it doesn't take 30 minutes. It's, it's all day and follow up and multiple days turns in the weeks involves the families. A lot needs to be done. And so this one is on the list um, and I put social worker crisis counselor there because it depended upon who we talk to and who we find, they might have a different background, which arrives uh, as they arrive in West with, with this role. Um, we've been looking at different job descriptions. There's not one posted yet because um, we're looking to see what duties would be assigned to this person. And I can't stress enough, it would be for the district. Um, we can't ever just assume that the elementary doesn't have these situations. Of course they do. Um, and to date, our counselors and even Dr. Pantel has been having to uh, cover this just the best that they can. And so having this person focus strictly on this work and then uh, when there's not a situation or they're not doing or, or maybe it's just follow up and or group counseling pieces, what other things can they do to help help the counselors as well? And so that one keeps coming up. And so we put that on the list. The other one that keeps coming up is this credit recovery dropout prevention piece. 
Um, we've got high schoolers um, that need um, credits uh, more than they can get in an eight period day um, that are, are struggling with the eight period day, I maybe should add. Um, maybe they're with the crisis counseling situation at risk for, for graduation, uh, at risk to drop out. Um, and having someone that's in this role instead of the lab piece that the high school has right now where a child's assigned you know, a period to go to the lab to work on an edge annuity course. Um, th this is something that's come up and so we added to the list as well. Um, middle school, high school, there's been a lot of discussion about the math intervention pieces coming up to the secondary campus that we have at the elementary school, especially with the block uh, that we're doing at ELAR and math. Um, we figured out a way to do it um, through the other down below with the reading piece at middle school, high school with who we currently have staff being Candace, uh, but we need the math piece as well. And so you can see that listed here. If you're looking at our star data, we have a big need with the rising eighth graders. Um, that will be in eighth grade next year with, with some score situations on star that we really have got to look at uh, in a block situation even. Um, and so we have a lot of needs here, um, some Algebra 1 supports, a lot of different things that, that this position could do. And then you can get into some special education pieces um, with our inclusion plan about really helping with the math and ELAR minutes in our school day. And Mrs. Kazda had already requested, and, and I know Ms. Humphrey is doing the ELAR piece at the elementary, you can see that listed down there below but the need to have a math counterpart uh, is listed there on that fourth bullet point, uh, along with an ELAR uh, and math focus um, to go along with Mrs. Wells and the team there at, at West Middle School um, to add another certified teacher. Um, you may not understand the way our staffing plan works across the district, but this gives us um, certified teachers uh, multiple at each of our campuses um, instead uh, the way the staffing works, um, whether it's pass, um, whether it's developmental, whether it's the inclusion, these uh, core content support that would go into the classrooms um, and then pull when, when needed if, if some assistance uh, was needed based on what was taught that day. We're trying to get that leveled out um, throughout all three schools. And so you can see how that plays out in these positions as well. We've learned uh, through uh, the dyslexia team and talking with Carla and Amanda about um, the need to uh, add some groups and how we can make that look with, with Candace and Rosie and, and if additional support is needed. And looking at the group needs, the lady shared with me that we have the potential for enough groups for another 0.5. And so we've got that half time listed there uh, for dyslexia help. Um, Ms. Costa talked about the need for this LLI piece um, for more pullout um, to go along with Ms. Debechka and some work she'll do with, with writing next year um, as an add-on for her, her role and having these pieces here and, and she requested two and so we already had one built in and, and here's another request. And then the need for this instructional tech piece, um, some stipends with all the different things we're rolling out with Google that we just feel that there needs to be a, a presence um, to help with Tech Tuesdays, for example, or, or the vision or framework for that piece to support teachers with, with all the different Google things that we're, we're doing across the district. Then at the bottom and the other, you, again, I've, I focused on three of these that go along with the ones that are, would be ESSER funded. Um, you may not know this, but the second diagnostician to support Brandy Landrum was already in the budget and, and we're working through and have a great uh, new hire there, um, who many of you know, with Sandra Bowles uh, coming on and, and going to do a fabulous job for us in, in support of, of our special ed diagnostic team there. And so you can see a couple of different funding sources and you can see the total for that is, is 352,500. And again, these are ideas, um, not saying we have to do all these things, but I think you can see how it fits the elementary plan that we've had a lot of success with, with adding these positions over the last year and two and carrying them up uh, where there's some needs at, at middle school and even high school. I mean, a reading interventionist is not just for sixth, seventh and eighth grade. If we have high schoolers that are struggling readers, then 
that reading improvement piece as well. Um, and so making sure we have these supports um, at the grade six through 12, uh, like we do at grades pre-K five. And so these are ideas that you've submitted that our principals have discussed with us and that Amanda, Carla, and, and Joanna and I have re reviewed and tried to get some money totals tied to. When you see these dollar amounts, I don't want you to think, oh, what do you, and that person's gonna make 65,000, I want that job. Remember, these are budget holders in case we have someone apply that has 40 years experience or zero years experience. We have to have a budget holder somewhere in the middle. Um, they could come in making 52 and, and so we wouldn't spend all that. We'd move that part of the money to another part of the grant. And so just wanted to make sure you knew what those budget holders were. This is how we, we budget for positions just so we have a dollar amount tied to it. Doesn't mean that's what they're getting paid. It's, it's a what if. All right, since this is the second biggest thing next to technology, as far as what's shown up on the list of, hey, Truett, we need this or this or this. Have you thought about this? Comments, questions, feedback through the chat or unmuting. Again, about learning loss. How can we help our struggling learners uh, the best within our school system? That's the theme of what you see on this list. Amanda, did you want to add anything or Carrie or Chuck? No, just I'll just say that um, to re reiterate the already budgeted and hired pieces are things that are not three year. These are things that we've been able to work in through title funds or SPED funds or, or general funds. So um, I think Mr. Truett said that, but just to reiterate that, um, for example, the instructional aid is an absolutely a title expense that we can, we can do. So. And I know I said it once, again, those things were already being put in place ahead of knowing about the ESSER money. And so those were already in the works ahead of the other seven bullet points there, or eight, excuse me, eight bullet points. Are we looking at the crisis counselor, social worker, or whomever that person is being year round? Currently our counselors are 207 Lee, um, can have that discussion. Uh, because crisis, crises, let me make it plural, they don't stop for four weeks in June and July. They're, they're year round. So I get what you're saying on that one. We can definitely look at that being uh, year round. Okay. In some districts, um, and we may already be part of this, I'm not sure, um, have a joint working relationship formally, informally with Claris. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's one thought. The other thought is, is how can we partner with the city? Because, you know, if we have a student that's in crisis, we have a family who has a student in crisis. <laughs> so, um, you know, we have our city at large in crisis then. And we've had, you know, our situations where we've not just recently, but, you know, way back to the explosion that affected our kids as well as the community. So that might be another angle to look at to make it year round, to make it, whether we house it on our campus, you know, there, and I know it's huge city comparisons, but Austin ISD has that kind of thing. Um, just some other ways to think about how we can get experienced people, full rounded support, that kind of thing. Good feedback. Yeah. Um, to answer Lee's kind of, or to piggyback off of that, coming from big school districts, they usually have a MHMR, some sort of representative um, in conjunction with that particular district. Uh, but those are big school districts. And of course they do pay for that, that service. So I don't know if that's something we need to look at. It's interesting, uh, Claudia, we've heard from three just in the last two weeks. So it's like they're aware there's ESSER funding to be spent on mental health and groups that never would have probably sought us out before this new funding source are. And so we're lining up meetings, really Zooms to see what they can offer us. So that that has, that's happened. Um, and so we're exploring them to see what they're all about, what they can do for us. Yeah, because I know there is one one comparable district in size down the interstate that 
um, does have a working relationship with Claris. So, yeah. I don't know if it's just because of where we're located, just far enough outside of Waco. They've, they've never reciprocated, but now, now they seem to be. And so I think we should take full advantage. West has never been Waco. Everybody else has. We've just been us. Yeah. And, uh, and that may turn into, if we can figure that out through another service, through another funding, there, there may even be a different wording for that first bullet point. I, I know we need additional counseling support um, and maybe it's in conjunction with one of these or multiple groups that you guys are talking about. So that could, that could morph. Anybody else have a comment about staffing? Uh, if we're on the right track or missing something or I know the middle school's been asking about these type of intervention positions for some time. And so I'm sure they're thrilled to see we're actually discussing it and needs at the high school as well for strugglers and, and more hands and, and uh, staff to support our kids in need. All right, and, and as always, you guys can call or email me if you have things you just didn't want to share in, in the Zoom. Um, you guys know I live up here. Um, on incentive pay, th this one is, is key for me too and came up a lot, especially as we've seen uh, other districts look at this retention stipend piece. Um, it was easy to get our staffing list going uh, even longer. At one point it was double, almost double, excuse me, what you just saw. But we kept going back to, um, well, what about our current staff and how can we support them in addition to their steps if, if they're on the teacher scale and things we're doing to review salaries. And, and you've heard me say at the district advisory team meeting, we're reviewing still the house bill free um, salary plans that were put in place two years ago. We're doing a stipend review even at our amounts. We're rethinking the amount we're giving for advanced degrees. I mean, we're doing a lot. Um, here at the end of the year and end of the summer, looking at all those things uh, and how we can enhance our, our pack compensation package. Um, you've heard me talk about we're running uh, plans to increase our insurance compensation piece to $300 um, a month. And so a lot of different things are on the table. In addition to that, um, we wanted to work into the budget a plan for retention stipends of $1,000 per employee for the next three years for a total of $1,000 a year for $3,000. And we wanted to do it with benefits, so it's truly $1,000. And so we figured that out with some work with Joanna and Amanda on how that could look and what that dollar amount would be. And you can see we can do that for $226,600. Uh, and so right now, and this number can change based on feedback and, and the board meeting and public hearing, but that's the dollar amount to do a thousand a year. And so that's an annual dollar amount there um, within that almost 700,000 that you've seen. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that this was in there as well as a way to say thank you for all you do and for staying on our team and staying with us and and being a part of our work and on the race to an A and, and just something that we wanted to have in there in addition to the other things I just mentioned. Again, this would not take the place of your step. This would be in addition to, that's why it's a retention stipend. Um, and so we put that in there just to see, I mean, this dollar amount can go up, but it, it means these other areas and it's mostly in staffing. So if you see this figure here again, 352,500, each of these positions, this goes down and, and then we can review this. If all this money for staffing isn't needed based on these salary projections, if they come in lower, we can add more to this or any number of these other areas that we'll look at next. And so that's something we can do as well. It's fluid. All right, comments about retention stipends. Crickets chirping. <laughs> Sorry, Truett, years one, two, and three, are you talking about when they first start with the district? So that would be the year one, and that would be a $1,000 stipend? No, 
So it means anybody who's on the team next year gets an additional thousand and anybody who's with us for the 22, 23 gets a thousand. Anybody's with us for the 23, 24 gets a thousand. So just a way to say, Hey, thanks for being on the team. We know you're working hard. We appreciate you. Here's an additional dollar amount above our compensation package that we're going to fund through ESSER. And then for the 24-25 school year, the goal is to have this built in then to your overall salary. And so it continues on on our steps that we have posted. So that's that's the goal. But it was important to Joanna, Amanda, and I and our board will hear this on the 9th that you'll notice we said all employees. We think it's important. All means all in this case because everyone's working very hard. So that means that I would finish work this school year and at X point next school year, not the beginning, I would say, I would say middle or even end of next school year, you get your thousand dollar stipend across the board. And for some employees, a thousand dollars life changing. So um, yeah, yes, this, is great. this is great. And, and that can be up for discussion. Maybe it's the new get it at Christmas because I know it's a time people love getting a check. Maybe it's for the summer, for vacation, you know, we can have a discussion about that as far as when, and they may want it, or maybe it comes back, they want it spread out over all their checks. Uh, you know, we can we can definitely do a survey on that and see what people want. Um, but we definitely wanted that worked into the budget. Yes, ma'am. All right, then the remaining expenditures, and these are fluid. A lot of professional development and training came back we already, as you can see, working on some, some budget figures based on what we've received from the campuses. Um, these are just examples because right now we're just putting in a projected total per year. And you can see, um, I'm thrilled to say, in addition to even some title funding and things that Amanda would add, you can see professional development and training will be 150000 over the three years or 50000 a year. And again, that number could go up. The main thing is you can see on there is the conferences coming back and and as COVID restrictions are, are reduced and folks wanting to go to things um, like the reading conference and and technology conferences and different things at Region 12 and the counselors, you know, since I see Claudia there, their, their conference and you name it, we want you guys to be able to go to these things and, and hone your crafts and and even present if, if you want to and you can see some are, are more in, in line with some of our initiatives about CPI and gift and talented redesign. The elementary really wanted to see about capturing kids' hearts. We got requests to go to the Ron Clark Academy. Um, and so different things that are just coming up that we'll keep adding to this list so we can uh, tie budget amounts to them. And then a lot of instructional materials and resources came up. Um, as you can see, we started the list here of what these things cost. Ready Teacher Toolkit, y'all requested the STAR Test Maker, um, a writing program, uh, and Amanda's been making a list of things she can fund through Title and then things we fund through ESSER, that if there's materials or resources you want or need, um, we can, we can uh, roll that out for you um, through this, this money. And you can see over three years, we'll have 120,000 here. Um, of course, that number can go up as well. Um, another header is the extended learning time and summer learning. We learned this summer that um, by upping the pay to $40 an hour from, from 20, um, or was it 25, Amanda? 25, I believe. 25 to 40. And if we have to go higher, we'll go higher to get you guys uh, the incentive pay and to help us with some summer programming. And as you've learned, we front-loaded the elementary and middle school plan where it's July and the start of August. And we have just the high school EOC and credit recovery and attendance recovery pieces here in June, but we can't offer those things without you guys. So whatever it takes to incentify, making up words to uh, get you guys there, we're willing to look at that. And so we've added some additional funding for summer programs pay for you guys. And on the mental health services and support, I'm not even about to say this is everything on the list. Um, this, this one's biggie uh, for everyone, and it's, it's moving a lot as far as um, um, ideas and, and ways we can help students and staff. And 
thing is, this is a catch-all. If you think about the staff positions I've mentioned, there's several that would tie down here, and that's why I mentioned seeing new staffing requests. This employee assistance program, you've heard Mrs. Adams talk about that it provides family counseling to any employee, um, all ranges of, of needs um, and advice and references and referrals and things. And so we wanted to look at that for you guys. Um, and then we talked about how our meal bag program doesn't cover all year and holidays and summer. So things we can do with that as that comes back online after COVID here, uh, the restrictions are, are, uh, are you know, there's some relief there. And so we wanted to have a funding piece for that. Um, but we've had other ideas about a wellness plan and workout plan and gym memberships and, and putting in a walking track around all the new property we have uh, north all the way to the elementary where you could walk three miles that's lit up. And I mean, you'd name it, we've had ideas thrown at us. And so this one's the one we're still working through, but wanted you to see some ideas that we had already priced for, uh, for this one as well. And that's it. Um, you know, everything you see right now is fits under the 700,000 a year mark. Um, but again, it's all up for discussion and feedback. So any closing thoughts on anyone or from anyone? Are we on the right track, missing the boat? You know, things that you want us to price, um, to consider? Um, what say you? Not everybody wants. <laughs> oh, we got a chat. Hold on. Oh, you bet. Thanks, Kelly. You bet. Trying and more than ever, I, I know there's times you're like, do they ever listen to us? Yes, we do. Uh, this line in this case, I'll say, yes, we do. I know we're not always perfect in that area. But this is a good example that everything on this list, we're, we're trying to use your feedback and, and put on a line item. So no, we're listening. No, we're, we want to hear your ideas. Uh, no, um, that it needs to fit the ESSER plan, of course, and, and learning loss as far as the overall header. But we, we want to hear from you. Um, we want to make sure we're taking to the board something that uh, is, is meeting your vision for uh, meeting the needs of our struggling learners. And I'm sorry, y'all, the trip to Bahamas got canceled. We got nixed. Sorry. <laughs> random. <laughs> it's not too random. I was thinking margarita machine in the teacher's lounge. Where was it that is. on the list? But... <laughs> Those are the ones that get you on the front page of the Waco trip, and you don't want to be on those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> West ISD uses ESSER funds to go to Jamaica and buy margaritas for its, you know. <laughs> That's where Joanne and I don't want to go to jail. Thank you. So we're, we're good. <laughs> I don't look good in orange. What else? Anybody? We we're trying to keep it under an hour. We're doing okay so far. Okay, here's the next steps then. Email me, call me, talk to Amanda, Joanna, your principals, whomever, uh, about other ideas and uh, suggestions if there's things you want us to price. Otherwise, uh, Monday, I'll send out a reminder email with the Zoom link. Um, we're shooting for 10 a.m. in case some people couldn't do afternoons uh, on Monday. Um, we'll go over again the plan and, and kind of like what I just did, but maybe with some new items. So hopefully you can tune in for that one and, and we can uh, we can have that discussion. Um, and Cindy, I, I see your comment. We can do those things now. And so that's not even a funding challenge for ESSER. If we need to do transportation, I figured out a budget even this year for a late bus run uh, and things. And so we, we have the ability to do those two things now. So I'd love to hear your ideas on that. Um, because uh, we were trying to implement that one for this school year, the one that just ended. So I actually have a whole proposal with dollar amounts tied to it for, for your ideas there and would love to, love to discuss it. So I'll add that to the list, but no, we can do that with our annual funding. And I know that we've talked about as a board um, transportation for after school programs at times also. So yeah. 
It is. I think you all know that's all about how many of our drivers are still willing to drive that second route. And we're struggling right now uh, with having drivers for our regular routes. And so we, we need to even look at that pay and that's on our list as well. Unfortunately, that one has that challenge, but it's not one we can't overcome. We might have coaches and other people that may want to make that money. So we just need to see. All right, guys, great meeting. Appreciate your support. As always, you know where to find us. Um, otherwise, I'll see you training tomorrow here at admin and definitely on the Zoom on Monday at 10. So take care, be safe, go Trojans. Let's spend that Esther money. Whoop, whoop. Not on Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs>